You saw it in a comic book. You had to have it. Why, it says right there that it's the chance of a lifetime. And there, it says that it's the most amazing invention you've ever seen. Dick says it's fine. Junior says that reception is clear as a bell. Diet Smith uses it to get stock reports. It made him rich. Plus, you can catch bad guys with it. And the only female here uses it to enjoy her radio programs while lying in bed eating chocolates. Something for everyone! And here it is, the Dick Tracy Wrist Radio. Note the cop making an arrest while smoking a cigar. You don't see that anymore. Here on the box are the Dick Tracy characters repeating the admiration for this little radio that they expressed in the ad we saw at the beginning. It's a DeMaico product. New York 7, New York. No batteries, no tubes, no electric. No kidding. It's a scientific miracle. Let's open it up. I can't wait. The box looks great for its age, but I'm going to take it slow because this box is around 70 years old. They said it would take six to eight weeks to get here, but here it is 70 years later. Talk about taking it slow. That's the post office for you. Wires. Some wires with the little clamps on the end for hooking up your antenna and ground. Okay, and the instructions or something. We'll look at that in a minute. Ooh, and here's the thing. A red one. These came in different colors, but when you ordered it, you didn't get to choose. It was their choice. You got what you got. We'll look at the radio up close in just a minute. But first, let's have a good look at the paper that came out of this box. On the front of it is a letter from headquarters from none other than Dick Tracy himself. Dear friend, I'm his friend. Pause the video if you want to read the whole letter. And on to the inside of the paper, where we find operating instructions for setting up a proper antenna and ground to be connected to the radio so it will receive stations. What's that, you say? In the comic strip, Tracy doesn't seem to be wired up to an antenna and a ground for his wrist radio to work. And on to the back of the paper. Here we have instructions on how to use the radio as a telephone. This requires there to be two of them, of course, so that's good for business. But I'll say this for them. At least they're saying and showing that the two units have to be connected with wire. The Dick Tracy wrist radios I got for Christmas in 1960 showed them operating wirelessly on the box and made no mention that they needed wires between them to work. And it said on the box that they were good up to one half mile. Even a kid knows that a half mile of wire is absurd, so they must be wireless, right? Well, no, actually, they need to be connected with wire. And the Finks at Remco are only going to give you 20 feet of it, too. No, this earlier wrist radio we're looking at today was more honest. Plus, it was a radio and not just a wired walkie-talkie. It would actually pull in stations if properly connected up to an antenna and ground. You tune it by moving the knob in and out. But this one is reluctant to move and I'm not going to try to force it. Crystal radios were a mainstay in the backs of comic books for decades. I bought this one out of an Archie comic in the early 60s. They were always pitching them as the latest scientific miracle breakthrough. But in fact, crystal radios are the oldest of all radio receivers and the most primitive. But they do work, and without batteries or other power source other than the broadcasting stations themselves. And that does seem like something of a miracle, especially to a kid who's just read about a guy who comes out of a phone booth in blue tights with the ability to fly, or a millionaire playboy who fights crime at night in a cape. So a scientific miracle for three ninety eight postpaid seems perfectly plausible and irresistible. 